In this video, we're going to be following on from the turning tool paths we created in the previous video. We're now going to be programming the moon tool paths. Some of the features we're going to be programming are this profile here, drilling these counterboard holes, and then milling this slot as well. The first tool path we're going to use is a 2D adaptive clearing. Same as before, we're going to select our tool. We can now select the contour. In the passes tab, we can specify the step over distance. So you can now see we have our toolpath. I'm now going to do a simulate the setup. I'm going to simulate all the toolpaths up until this milling toolpath. What you can see here is the start of our toolpath is here. The actual stock is around this profile here. What we need to do is optimize this tool path so that the tool is not going to do air cutting as all these lines here are going to be cutting air and not actually cutting the material. So what we need to do for this tool path is sketch a user defined stop contour to reduce the amount of air cutting on this tool path. To do this, I'm going to create a manufacturing model. What the manufacturing model actually does is it allows me to make edits or sketches and design changes to the model, which won't affect the original CAD model. To do this, I'm going to select Edit Manufacturing Model. As you can see, this has now opened up the ribbon tools, which you will see are similar to the ones in the design space. I'm going to select Create Sketch and select this front face. Now I'm going to select Sensor Diameter Circle. I'm going to select the center point and we're going to sketch a circle just bigger than this outer profile here. From there I can hit finish sketch and I can also hit finish edit. We now have our sketch in the manufacturer space. So I can now jump back into this toolpath. Click on the Geometry tab, and I'm going to check this box here, Stop Contours. As you can see, the Stop Contour is currently using the Setup Stock. What we want to do is select our sketch here. And as you can see, this has now projected the stock just around this profile. We can now hit OK. And you can see we have our toolpath. This is now doing less air cutting and has now optimized the toolpath. What we can now do is program the finishing toolpath. To do this, I'm going to create a derived operation like we have done before. And I'm going to select 2D contour. From there, I can just hit OK. And as you can see, we have our toolpath there. The 
next operation we're going to program is the drilling of these counterboard holes. We're going to select the drill operation. We need to select the tool. What I have here is a step drill. I'm going to select the geometry. I'm going to select this cylinder here. We can also select this checkbox here, select same diameter. This is now pre-selected the three other holes. In the heights tab, we need to select this option here, drill tip through bottom of hole. You can now see shoulder of the drill is level with the bottom of the hole. Whilst we're in the heights tab, we can also specify the top height. If we go into this drop down and select a selection, we can then select this edge here. This is ensured that the drill is not going to plunge into stock. Finally, in the cycle tab, you can select whichever cycle you like. The final operation we're going to do for the milling is this slot here. To do this, we're going to select 2D pocket. We need to select the appropriate tool. Inside the geometry tab, what we now need to do is check this box here for tool orientation. What we need to do is reorientate the z-axis so it's perpendicular with this flat area here. By selecting this flat area, the z is now pointing perpendicular with this flat. We can now select the pocket selection. In the heights tab, For the top height, we're going to select selection and we're going to select this edge here. If we now go into the passes tab, you can see we have a maximum step over of 3.8 mil. I'm going to drop this down to 1.5 millimeters. We can also activate this checkbox here for multiple depths and we can specify a step down. From there we can hit OK. As you can see we now have our rough and tool path. From there, I'm going to create a derived operation. I'm going to select 2D contour. Inside the passes tab, I'm going to check this box here, multiple finishing passes. We can specify the same step over. Because this is going to be a finishing tool path, we can deactivate multiple depths. So we're going to do a full depth finishing pass. As you can see here, the tool is actually going to plunge down and this will actually leave a dwell mark on this surface. What we want is the tool to plunge out of the stock and then move into cut.
to do this, I'm going to jump back into a toolpath and go into a geometry tab. And here we can specify a tangential extension distance. This is now extended this across so the tool can plunge down without plunging into the material. What we can now do is simulate the setup again. And this time we can hit this icon here, go to end of toolpath. What we can now see is all the toolpaths have been completed and all the model has now turned green. This shows there are no areas where there is any stock to leave remaining.